Now we need to phase our drums. Now there's a manual way to do this, but that takes a long time. So we like to use this program called Auto Align. And this program is killer. Yes. Yeah, well this, and this is like beyond just phasing your drum. You can't phase it like this. This is like phases it over in real time, like as it's playing. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, this is a whole other level. So I'm going to start the intro through here since it does the least amount of stops for this part. So everything comes up the way it's supposed to because it's, you know, we brought in our preset on our template. But this is the snare top. We start with the snare top track. We open up the auto align program on it and we want to set the input threshold. We ought to make sure that this is set to delay and polarity and that send is set to one. It comes in like this, you don't have to worry about it. So you hit play. So that's at a good level, no problem. That's all we had to do on the first one. Now, for the rest of the drums, except for the kick drum, we'll have to set the setting of the side chain, which is our snare top, and the setting of this drum, which is the input. Again, delay and polarity on this switch here. The send is zero. We're not sending, we're receiving. We're receiving one, and that's receiving from the snare top. So we hit play and we start adjusting these. So this was our snare send. This is the track here. Once we get that hitting, we start it over and we press detect polarity and hit play. And when it's done detecting, it will change the view on there. And then a number will pop up here showing how many milliseconds behind it is automatically fix itself. And man, the drums get so powerful and focused and more low end. It's crazy. It's nice. So and then you just go down the line. Go down the line until we get to the kick drum. So explain kind of what you're going to do. I don't want to play through this whole thing, you know. So you're just going to do them all and then you do the kick drum to itself? I do the snare through the room mics, then do the kick drum to the snare, and the kick drum takes on a twist, a little different twist to it. But the but everything you 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 auto align everything to the snare. To the snare top. Snare top. Okay, now kick auto align kicky. So when to get the kick drum, we actually want to change the settings to send two and receive one. Now this will already be in the preset, but if you were setting this up from scratch without the template, then you'd have to know this. You're sending two and you're receiving one. So the snare in we are detecting off of, I'm sorry, the kick in, we are detecting off the snare top. So notice it's not here anything because this is the kick drum, so we got to get down to where it's in the sound. All right, now we'll detect it. kick two or kick out is coming off of receive two here which is the kick drum so now the rest of the kick drums will be auto aligned off the actual kick drum right I love how awesome this our program is Nice part about the way we've got this set up. Like, the drums already sound pretty darn good. A lot of the heavy lifting is already done. So, like, when I sit down, I don't have to, like, like it already sounds cool. It already sounds good. Everything's 
where it needs to be. Gain stages are good. Gates are set. All my samples are in. Everything's phase aligned and you know, sounds tight and mean, so. Also, you want to make sure all your triggers are fired. And you control that by this detail knob here. So you want to make sure each one, each kick drum has a little flag over. And if there's kick drums that are quick in a row and it's not picking it up, you can mess with the re-trigger time, which will help a little bit. You can just gain stage them in. So this is the last kind of phase of, of setting up. And you know, on a, on a decently recorded song, you can probably do this in 20, 30 minutes. Sometimes if it's a lot of tracks and they're named really weird, just naming it can take a little while and color coding it, but you know, maybe 40 minutes or so. And I'm telling you, once this is done right and you sit down and mix, it is it is a breeze, man. It already sounds good. Everything is where it needs to be. Everything's named what it needs to be. And the nice part about doing it this way, you know, and this is kind of what I learned from Chris Lord Algae and all these guys, is that if somebody sets it up for me, I, I don't listen to the song. I mean, unless I've produced it, if it's something coming in from somewhere else, I don't listen to the song until I'm sitting down and ready to mix it. And when I sit down, it already sounds good. So I don't sit down from the beginning and try to figure out, oh, where's the guitar, and oh, is that out of phase, and that sounds terrible, and oh, God, there's all, like, Johnny's already squared away so many of the problems, so the way I look at it, it's like, the mix is already rounded second base, before I even sit down, it already sounds good, so then, it's like, then I can just focus on making it awesome, and I'm not sitting there wasting my time repairing stuff, and trying to find stuff, and get things in phase, and you know, because sometimes you sit and mess with that stuff, by the time you get it all done, you know, you've already heard the song ten times, and it's, it's like that initial, the, the initial impact the song has on you is gone. And that's what, that's what uh, CLA talks about is so important, is that initial feeling that you have when you hear the song for the first time. Um, and he likes to, when he sits down, he likes to make, the majority of his mixing is that first kind of pass through the song. He's getting all his levels. He's hearing things. It's all, uh, you know, he's making all these, uh, you know, discoveries in real time. And he starts, you know, throwing echoes and automating things. And it's, it's all happening kind of live. And uh, it's a lot of fun, man. It's a, it's a fun way to mix. It's cool, man. You mix it with momentum. All right, so we're ready to import our reference track. So tell them what you're doing. Tell them what a reference right. track is. A reference track is a list of songs that we like the sound of that we can reference when mixing. And it's all styles. We've got rock and country and pop and hip-hop, metal. So I go to my intro marker, and I click on it, and I look up here and see that it's at bar 19 1 so I highlight my master track here and I go to save before I ever do anything I want to save I want to import session data and it's in the ZZZ mixing info and protocol and triple A refs track open that up and always choose the 88 we have one for everything, but we're, we are now always mixing in 88. So, bring open that up. Audio media options, we want to link to source media. Because you don't want to import 16,000 songs into each, each, each session. We want to change our offset to bar 19.1. 19, 19. So the song kind of starts where our song starts. Right. And they all start there. Which I'll actually slide them around as I, if I find, let's say I'm working on some singer-songwriter thing and I'm listening to Stop This Train by John Mayer, I'll usually line up the first chorus with the first chorus of the uh, of the track I'm mixing. 
and then I'll, I'll, I'll loop that chorus and that's where I'll kind of start. Once I do my initial little pass of getting everything where I want it, then I'll just loop that hook and just start digging right into the hook. Alright, so we want to click on this and make it a new track. We want to import and replace existing playlists and we want all. Right, because you want all the playlists to show up. But again, we're not importing the audio. It's linking to this folder that's on our system drive. We hit OK. Brings it in. We've got it here. We'll make it medium. I'll check the volume. And delete any automation that's in the volume or mutes. Yeah, for some reason, sometimes it just shows up for, with a little dot. I think that has to do with you offsetting it though. And then there's all the songs. So it's, you know, it's every... So what song do we want to start with for this? this? Put it since you were gone. It's Kelly Clarkson. And then what happens is that comes out, that's already set up to come out analog too on the Avocet. Usually what I'll do is if I'm mixing with an L2 on the, on the master return, then I'll just drop that down like maybe 2 dBs, the, the reference, because the reference is going to be mastered and super loud, I'm never going to be mixing like that. And then if I'm mixing like freestyle with no master volume, then I'll just drop it down to whatever is appropriate. Sometimes it's minus six or eight dBs, depending on what volume I'm mixing at. Just so that it's not this huge jump in volume between what I'm doing and, and the reference. So we just... Is that about it? What's left? Mm. Just some things about the view, getting the track height. We pretty much want to make all the tracks small except for the lead vocals and our subgroups. And uh, our song track that we import back in that we named, we want to make that large. Because when we're ready to print the mix, it's where we print the mix. And that will be the final mix file. Yeah, and the rest is just setting up our recall sheet and bringing in our mix folder. And that's it. So there you guys have it, man. That's a basic, boy, if we ever did a video that people are going to ask me questions about the video, it's this series. But again, this is, uh, this is designed for guys that are going to be assisting or interning at Hemispheres in Nashville because they're not going to have Woody right there. Though Woody will still be a part of the studio, you know, he'll be working with us on NiceCast and, and Skype on certain things, and I'm also going to be still sending him uh, sessions to edit and, you know, beat detect and tune vocals or whatever. So Woody will always be here. But we're going to need to find somebody to do some of this stuff. And, um, yeah, if you're interested, hit us up. But, uh, you know, you got to be meticulous, man. It's the same, you know, we don't mess around with this stuff. And me and me and John have really, over the last two years or so, three years, I've really developed a system that works for us. And now, you know, we've had to modify it for the new hybrid system. But it's really, really exciting. I'll show you guys the setup real quick, and we're done. Good job, Johnny. We're ready to mix. And it already sounds pretty good. You know, vocals are a little cranked and loud and funky, wet. but you know, I'm telling you, 10, 15 minutes, I think it'll start sounding nice. And in an hour and a half, you know, she may be ready to print out. There it is. Definitely enjoying the Pro Axe, huh? Oh, yeah, I love them. Yeah, huh? I want a pair myself. I love that Sante. Really like that Avid Artist mix, mix too. You know, that was a, was a fun one. All right. See you all in Nashville. P.S. I want to thank Angela Pepe. Absolutely. Angela Pepe, this is her song. Listen, um, we produced it here, and 
Is that Tarek on drums? Me and TJ on guitar? Is that me on bass too? Uh, it's either you or Bobby. Y'all kind of did have Bobby happen. Patterson did some. I did some. And Angela, she's such a talented kid, man. She's like 15 or 16 and writes all these great songs and sings fantastic. So, yeah, again, Angela Pepe, and the song is called Listen. And we're doing a whole record. We just picked this one. I don't know. I just kind of like this tune. It's got that. It's got a little of that uh, Home at Last Steely Dan beat. <laughs> 